Anytime you are conducting experiments in the lab, be sure to wear closed toe shoes, long pants, a shirt that covers your shoulders, wear goggles, and gloves. In this experiment, 2-bromobutane will be synthesized from 2-butanol. The SN1 reactivity of 2-bromobutane will then be assessed by comparing the rate of the reaction against a set of alkyl halide reference samples. In the first part of the experiment, 2-bromobutane will be synthesized from 2-butanol. The mechanism is shown here. Sulfuric acid will be used to protonate the alcohol, converting it into a good leaving group. In the rate determining step, water will be expelled from the molecule to form an alkyl carbocation. The carbocation will then capture a bromide ion which is generated by a mixture of ammonium bromide and aqueous sulfuric acid. Fold the whey paper in half to make two triangles and zero out this scale. Weigh 8 grams of ammonium bromide. Use a scupula to carefully weigh out 8 grams. Be sure to write down the amount weighed. Use the bottom of the Butner funnel to add the ammonium bromide to the round bottom flask. Obtain one of the pre-measured vials of 2-butanol. Zero out the scale and then add the vial. Write the weight of the vial and make sure your TA signs this weight. Pipette the weighted 2-butanol into the 100 milliliter flask. In the presence of your TA, weigh the empty vial that contained the 2-butanol. Zero out the scale and be sure the vial is the same as before, meaning with or without the cap. Write down the weight of the vial and have your TA sign this value. Use a medium or large beaker to add about 20 milliliters of 12 molar sulfuric acid. Use the graduated cylinder to measure 20 milliliters of the 12 molar sulfuric acid. Add the acid carefully to the round bottom flask. Tilt the round bottom flask and slowly add the stir bar. Stack a thermal well onto a stir plate. Carefully place the stand with two clamps behind the setup. Add the 100 milliliter round bottom flask and secure the flask. Set up a reflux. Slightly grease the Claisen adapter and attach it to the round bottom flask. Then secure it with the other clamp. Set up the condenser so that the water inside is at the bottom and the water out is on the top. Slightly grease the bottom and place it on the right side of the adapter. Place the thermometer onto the adapter. Make sure that the thermometer is right above the stir bar. Turn on the stir. Turn on the water. Plug the thermo well into the variac plug. Turn on the variac and turn the dial to 50. Leave this for 30 minutes and maintain a temperature of 90 to 100 degrees Celsius by turning the variac. During this 30 minutes, make sure your sash is down on your hood in case any hydrogen bromide gas is released from the reflux setup. Make sure you take notes of any changes and at what temperatures they occur at. After 30 minutes, turn off the variac, turn off the water, then disassemble the reflux apparatus. In this segment, a distillation will be performed to remove the 2-bromobutane from the reaction mixture. Using a graduated cylinder, measure 20 milliliters of DI water. Then set up for a simple distillation. Move the second clamp onto another stand for the condenser. Be sure the thermometer is placed in the opening between the round bottom and the condenser. 
Make sure to slightly grease all joints and secure the joints that don't have a metal clamp with a plastic one. For this setup, use a round bottom flask to ensure there is no gap between the collection flask and the bent adapter. Turn on the water. Turn the variac on. At about 80 degrees Celsius, distillation occurs along with some water. Once it has stopped distilling, turn off the variac. Turn off the water. Remove the round bottom flask from the simple distillation setup onto a cork. Although it was difficult to see here, there is not much of an aqueous layer, which will be removed with a pipette. A new pipette is used to transfer the organic layer into a small Erlenmeyer flask. The liquid remaining in the 100 milliliter round bottom flask from the simple distillation setup should be discarded into the halogenated waste. Fold a whey paper in half to make two triangles and zero out the scale. Measure 0.3 to 0.5 grams of the anhydrous potassium carbonate. This will dry out the solution. This should be added little by little and added until the solution becomes clear with occasional swirling. This should be done for about five minutes. While waiting, clean the simple distillation setup and spray down the glassware with acetone to help speed up the drying process. Another distillation will be performed to obtain the boiling point for 2-bromobutane. With your TA present, weigh an empty vial. Write down the weight and have your TA sign it. Be sure to note whether the vial has the cap on or off. Use a 25 milliliter round bottom flask with a small stir bar. Decant the solution by carefully pouring it into the 25 milliliter flask. Add the 25 milliliter round bottom flask to the thermal well and secure the flask. Set up a simple distillation. Make sure to slightly grease all joints and secure the joints that don't have a metal clamp with a plastic one. Be sure the thermometer is placed in between the opening of the round bottom flask and the condenser. Adjust the setup so that the pre-weighed vial can be placed under the bent adapter. Turn the water on and turn the variac on. Take note of the temperature at which the distillation begins. Also take note of the temperature at which distillation ends. This will be your boiling point range. Turn off the variac. Turn off the water. In front of your TA, weigh the collected vial. Zero out the scale and be sure the vial is the same as before, meaning with or without the cap. Write down the weight of the vial and have your TA sign this value. Save your vial in your drawer until next class. In the second part of the experiment, the SN1 reactivity of 2-bromobutane will be compared to both a series of alkyl bromides with different degrees of substitution and a set of alkyl halides containing bromine, chlorine, and iodine as the halogen. The reactivity will be assessed by comparing the rates of reaction between the alkyl halides and a solution of silver nitrate in ethanol. The balanced equation is shown here. This reaction exhibits first order kinetic behavior and produces silver halide, which is insoluble in ethanol. Prepare the GC sample prior to testing. Add a little more than one milliliter of the product in the GC vial. Hand this vial to your TA and be sure to note the slot of your vial. They will send you a file with only vial numbers, so be sure you know which one is your sample. Use a medium beaker to pour about eight milliliters of silver nitrate. In tubes one and four, add two drops of your product.
In tube 2, add 2 drops of 1 bromobutane. In tube 3, add 2 drops of 2 bromo 2 methylpropane. In tube 5, add 2 drops of 2 chlorobutane. In tube 6, add 2 drops of 2 idobutane. The vial should be placed where you can see the reaction occur. Carefully and quickly add one milliliter of silver nitrate to each tube. Be sure to use a stopwatch and write down any observations and the time in which they occur. Using a 400 milliliter beaker with water and a hot plate, heat the water to about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Place the tubes that had no reaction in the beaker to see if a reaction can occur with heat. The liquid in the tubes should be discarded in the heavy metal waste. At the end of the lab period, your TA will submit your product to be analyzed by a GCFID to determine its level of purity. Basically, the injector port will inject the sample at a high enough temperature to vaporize it. The carrier gas will move it through the column. The column will separate different compounds within the sample, and each compound will be detected by the FID. The data is outputted into a chromatogram. Prior to the next lab, your TA will send you a PDF report of the data. The data will look like this. The percent purity of your compounds will be determined by using the table and formula shown. You will find this one has high purity. Here are some examples of unpure samples. I already determined the percent purity for the product of interest peak and it is shown on the chromatogram. You can see the purity from sample to sample is anywhere from about 30 to 86% pure. I hope you found this video helpful to ace your practical.